In today's episode, we're going to try to get through 10 problems that involve combining liked terms. So please stay tuned. If this is your first time here, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Take two seconds right now to smash that like button. It's very important in terms of helping me make better content for you. Thanks. And now, let's get on to the problems. I can remember when I was a little kid, a game called Memory. The main purpose of this game was to match what you remembered with what was under a card. You had two cards to match. You had to first turn over all your cards in your deck. Then, what you would do was uncover one at a time. The main point was to find a matching pair, a light item, an item that looked very similar. You can even call it a light term. In the world of algebra, the match game forms the basis for the entire subject. That is, the combining of the light terms. The main goal in almost all forms of mathematics and science in general is to be able to simplify. That is, make a term that's very wide into another term that's very small so we can come up with a simple answer that everyone understands. Well, almost everyone. The simplification of big terms can be done in a lot of different ways, such as the inverse operations and fractional elimination, meaning you cross out your numerator and your denominators. But those are less frequent forms of simplification than the combining of the light terms in an expression. These terms are terms that look alike. First step in combining like terms is to define what terms are. Terms can be defined as algebraic expressions that look a certain way. They are like terms when they have all one or more features that are similar. So in the case of say negative 50 and 2, these terms are like terms because 2 and 50 are constants. A constant can be defined as just a number. Other cases aren't as clear as that one is. Remember, all numbers are constants, and constants can always be combined. For other terms, we have to look at more than just the constant term, i.e. the number. We also have to look at the variable which is the letter next to the number, as well as the powers, the exponents. If we stated before that constant terms are like terms, so if we have a seven and a five, they're still like. In order for an expression to be a liked term, we have to look at both the letters that follow the numbers, that's the usual convention, numbers and letters, as well as the exponents. That will tell us whether or not the two terms are alike. Once they're alike, it opens up the door to a whole other set of possibilities, mainly meaning that you can combine the terms using any one of the four basic forms of operation, adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing, once they are alike. So we've talked and defined what like terms are enough. The best best way of learning this is by example. But before we get to the examples, let's just highlight the steps that we need to know. And they're pretty simple. Two steps can define like terms. Step one, make sure the expressions look alike. Meaning that if you have an X in one expression, you have to have an X in the other expression. If you have a Y in one expression, you have to have a Y in the other expression. If you have a number in one expression, you have to have a number in the other expression. That's what is meant by when terms look alike. Next, make sure, wait, there is no next. You have to make sure that everything looks alike. So the rules to combine like terms aren't really rules, instead are rules. There's only one rule to combine like terms. Make sure everything looks alike. As stated before, two numbers like a seven and a 50 are like terms because they're both constants. So rule that out, they're like terms. X is equal to an X, that's another like term. Squared is equal to a squared, that's another like term. A third is equal to a third, that's another like term. Those are examples of like terms. Once we know that they're alike, we can simply add, subtract, multiply, or divide. To make our life simpler for the examples we're about to do, for all the like terms that we have, we'll either square them out if they look alike, or use some other geometric shape, such as a triangle, circle, rectangle. So let's get with it, with our one-step process to combining like terms, or simplifying expressions. First problem up. It says 13x minus 7y plus 4x. Here, we're going to circle the two like terms. Like I told you before in the beginning, the numbers 
are constants. Constants are always light terms. So the 13 and the 4, even though they don't say the same exact thing, are light terms. Terms. They're both constants. So that's check one. Check two, it are the variables. In this case, the variables are the same. Both have x and x. They're like terms. So we can combine the terms 13x plus 4x. We always have to take the sign that's in front of the second light term. In this case, it's a plus. Don't take that sign that's in front of the negative 7y. That we don't need. So let's circle the 13x and a plus the 4x. Now, we get an answer of 17x minus 7y. Next problem, problem two. 5x squared minus 4x plus 9x squared. We can combine the 9x squared and the 5x squared, but we can't combine the 4x. Because it doesn't have a squared, we can't combine it. We're going to combine the 5x squared and the 9x squared, which will give us 14x squared minus 4x. So our answer is 14x squared minus 4x. We have to leave it like that. Problem three. Problem three reads 4b plus 7a minus 8. In this case, we have no terms that are alike. If you notice, the 4b does not have a matching term in this expression. Neither does the 7a. Neither does the constant itself, which is 8. So we have no matching terms. So we have to leave an expression like this as is. The answer is the question. So the answer will be 4b plus 7a minus 8. That's fit. Question number 4. Parentheses 3a minus b plus 2a. In this case, don't let the parentheses confuse you. I see this time and time again. If you see an operation between the parentheses and an algebraic expression, in this case 2a, and the operation being plus, you have to add. Sometimes people like to distribute and multiply. That's incorrect. Don't do that. Don't do that. In this case, just combine your like terms. It's gonna be 2a, let's try a box this time. We'll put a box around 2a and 3a. And remember to take the sign that's in front of the 2a. So in that case, 3a plus 2a is gonna give us 5a. And we just bring down the b. So our final answer would be 5a minus b. Four problems done, six more to go. The next problem reads 2w plus 4w squared minus 5w cubed. In this case, it's just like the third case. There are no like terms. Nothing looks alike. They all have different exponential values. So in this case, the question is the answer. 2a plus 4w squared minus 5w cubed. That's the answer. Question five, done. The next question asks 2x plus 7x minus 6x plus eight. In this case, we have to combine the terms 2x, 7x, and 6x using the signs that are in front of each except the first respectively. That will give us a value of 3x and then we simply bring down the plus 8. So the final answer is 3x plus 8. That was question 6. Guys, again, please smash the like button right now and also comment below. Do it for better videos in the future. Question number seven reads 11q plus 5p minus 9q plus 7p. Here we have two sets of like terms. So we're gonna use both the circle and the square. We're going to put a square around the letter P and that's gonna be around the 5p and the 7p. We can combine those two terms to make it 12p. Then we have the 11q minus 9q. Let's put two circles behind those. Taking a sign that's in front of the 9, which is a negative, we'll be left with a 2q. So the final answer is 2q plus 12p. Question number eight says 12 plus 9x minus 6x minus 19. Two sets of like terms again. Constants of 12 and 19, negative 19, which will give us a negative seven, and the terms 9x minus 6x, which in this case will be 3x. So the final answer is 3x minus seven. It's always good convention to put the letters before the numbers. So 3x minus nine. Question number nine. Two minus five t plus eight plus five t minus eight. In this case, we can combine our like terms, but something special happens here when we combine our like terms. If you notice, you have negative eight as a constant, but you also have positive eight. A positive and a negative of the same values have to be able to cancel out, so they're gone. Then you have negative five t plus positive five t. Again, that cancels out, leaving us with just a value of two. So our answer for this expression is two. The final problem, problem 10. We have y squared 
plus 3y squared minus 6y plus 4y squared. In this case, we can combine all the y squared, which will give us 8y squared minus 6y. Again, 6y and 8y squared are not like terms. They're not alike. So the final answer is just going to be 8y squared minus 6y. Guys, we're stopping here. I hope you had a pleasant time understanding this relatively simple topic of combining like terms. I realize sometimes it gets confusing when you see a lot of terms mushed together. You just have to take your time with it and remember the rule that we learned today. Is make sure everything looks alike. And keep it in mind that constants are numbers and numbers are always liked terms. Make sure to comment, like, and subscribe. I'm AKG and I'll see you next week with another lesson.